I want to quickly look at ministerial ethics and etiquette. Ministerial ethics and etiquette. Now, unfortunately, many pastors are living as if there's no ethics in the ministry. People are doing things anyhow in the ministry. And so it's very important that as a minister of the gospel, you get this understanding. Now, the truth is that Many people see pastors that they are God. I'm talking about ignoramus, plenty ignoramus people. Talking about some who are Christians and those who are not. They see pastors as if pastors are God. So if you tell them you go to toilet, cry, I am one say, hey, so for so called toilet. I'm poor. You go for who say, oh, no, Benjamin. It's you know, Philip say, who crack us, who did you cry? No, you cry, no one say, hey, so for so did it. It's true. Hallelujah. Yeah, so as men of God, it is very important for us to understand ethics. It's very important. Now, a pastor was told to go and bury somebody. Nipa yesiku siye nipa na fo obo nipa na we wunu deliverance. E wo musi yo obo ni deliverance. Nipa ku siye nipa na obo ni deliverance. Yeah, so many ethics are possible for bebre. So many problems in the ministry. So many problems. You know, so we need to understand ethics now. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. The Bible says that let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. And Apostle Paul spoke by the inspiration of God because there's so many errors in the ministry. There's a certain um, 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 master class that I do. We call it correcting the errors in ministry. Now, in that master class, I spoke about 10 errors that every minister must desist from. 10 errors. Powerful masterclass. And tonight, we also want to understand that when you make too many blunders, you can't cut bars and asunder because you are in error. Now, in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 2, the Bible says that we shall cut bars asunder. But the truth is that when you are making errors, there's no way you can cut bats asunder. So as a minister, you need to understand the place of living a refined life. Live a refined life. See, nyamie jumani ye nyani keke wu. Ye nyani keke. Ye di ke hun se, akun te buwe jumani ye yeno. Ube buwe kunta inti. O ya sofu un kwa ufile se, wano ye entri tu se, oti so, ya fen se, oti koko so nana ba o se, den yon hun kura ye se me. She, nyami e juma na ye gra gra wo gra gra wo gra gra wo ye dini ne ye juma no ne jai se ope si ye mpam pa wo no no ye nye nyami e juma sa un kwa obi a ye bibi a un kwa un ye bi no we don't do that in the ministry you are a failure already if you have that mindset oh me ne ne me ni bi ne ne me ni bi I don't want to hear that un ni bi na wano no obi ye ni ne ye ni bi you know so you need to understand that there are certain things that God doesn't want you to be part of. Yeah. One of the things I saw about God is that God doesn't like people who complain. I'm telling you. Yeah. In Numbers chapter 14, verse 28, the last time I saw those who complain, he killed all of them. Yeah. So God, one thing God doesn't like is complain. But God likes people that even if they don't have, they behave like I'll get. Yeah, that's the kind of people that God wants. That's the, that's the army God is building in the end time. So if you're a pastor and you are making yourself as if uh, you, you, dear, you should be treated. Please, it, it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't go well in the ministry. It doesn't, it doesn't go like that. In Jeremiah chapter forty-eight, the verse ten, Jeremiah forty-eight ten, the Bible says that curse is he who do the work of God deceitfully. Curse is he who do the work of God deceitfully. So we need to understand ethics and behave well as ministers. Too many pastors cases in the news. radio no. Ah, I don't know you're going to say So for four, be brave. Go in your mouth, be brave. It is a case of so for cry. Honor, honor, crown, come home. You're a mook, crown, sell, crown. Okay, who is a crown? Yeah, sign the baby crown now. Well, yes, 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 yes. So more, almost some bosom, yes, or more, sorry, them. It's the account to sell one of them. To the sense, oh, be bored, the nation, yes, or caught a crown. Can you imagine? Oh, be a babo, the nina, also, we need you know. Yes, I'll call for a quarter. Adentia. Sofu fobi bi awo deni omo musuban basa. 
you are new, you know, concept and quan or your system. Please, the pastoral work needs a, a decorum. So let's look at what is ethics. What is ethics? So ethics, according to this study, is the study of principles relating to right and wrong conduct. The study of principles relating to right and wrong conduct. Because there's no protection for you. Please, we need to understand that every principled man is stronger than the principality. Yeah, every principled man. Can you write it down? Every principled man is stronger than a principality. I'm telling you the truth. So please, we need to be principled guided. Don't just be in the ministry and do what you want. It doesn't work like that. The ministry is not for your grandfather. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. It is not even for your father. So you, you have the privilege to be called. Please learn to be disciplined. Don't go anywhere and do what you like. One of the things I've learned over the years is that anywhere I go, I look for the authority of the place and I obey. I submit to the authority. I don't go and then say, me, they're me, they're like this. No, 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 I don't. I've never done that. I've never. So anywhere I serve, if it is time for me to leave, they don't want me to leave. <laughs> uh, very disciplined. So what is ethics? Ethics is the standard that governs the conduct of a person, especially a member of a profession. So there's, there's a standard to the pastoral call. So as, as you are being prepared to be ordained, you need to understand these things. Please. There's, there's nothing like ma, ma ma kwe, ma, me yashe. There's nothing like that. Now understand that the standard of God will never be reduced for anybody. The standard of God, everybody must grow towards that standard. It will never be reduced for you. If it was not reduced for Joseph, do you think it will be reduced for you? Even Jesus, it was not reduced for him. It will never be reduced for you. So please, grow. Grow as a minister. Now we are looking at two key words that goes with ethics. We have principles and standards. Principles and standards. Principles and standards. There's no way you can talk about ethics without these two words. So let's look at what are principles. What are principles? Principles are the fundamental assumptions or guiding beliefs. That's the principle. So if I see a man of God, a woman of God who doesn't have any principle guiding them, I know we won't do baby. Yeah. It's true. If you don't have any principle guiding you, oh dear young conqua, cosonia coqua. No, there must be principles guiding you. And you be be an asofu ye didi. Who paid you an end to be just as you know. And you be be an ye didi. And you be be an ye didi. And you be be a. And I was so man kofu who said oh. No, and you be be a. So you must have principles that are guiding you. Now let's look at standards. What are standards? Standards is having a recognized level of excellence or authority having a recognized level of excellence or authority there are some people when they go to a corporate gathering they are always excluded yeah 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 we need to understand that there's a standard for the work God has called us to do. So this evening, I want to take my time by the leadings of the Spirit to explain to us as pastors, there are principles that must guide our ministries. Number one, understand this. Ministry is patience. Ministry is patience. Ministry is patience. Whether you like it or not, you have to be patient in ministry. One man of God said he was praying and he saw Jesus and he asked Jesus, he said, Jesus, I have a question. And Jesus said, okay, what, what question? And he asked, he said, Jesus, what problem do you have with man, man? 
human beings. What problem do you have? With? And Jesus told me that human beings are not patient. Human beings are not patient. So for four day, almost some day, yanka. We are not patient to answer. So for be bombayas and yiri wu. I didn't tell you any hano. Any yamikas is oh, two bone bombay man more messes hano. I said no, no man, two me boache. Into me sound to me. Kunu kunu krana me hunt me. Ah, so for oh bombayas and yiri. Ladies and gentlemen, ministry will test you. No matter where you start from and what you start with, there are so many testings in the ministry. Too many, whether you like it or not. There are tests. One of the things that will help you to escape this test, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, is the Lord. It is only the Lord that will show you the way of escape in this test. No matter the level you are, you meet a test in the ministry. Yeah. Number three. Ministry blossoms with diligence and faithfulness. Ministry blossoms with diligence and faithfulness. Now understand this. The people God has called you to lead, they are not fools. Yeah. So don't think that because they are submitted to you, you know, you will not be diligent. They are not fools. The reason why many people are leaving your ministry is because you are not diligent. It's true. The Bible says that the diligent shall bear rule. The diligent. You must be diligent. You must be diligent. In whatever dealing you are dealing, no matter the giftings you manifest, please, your faithfulness will determine that in 10 years' time, the church will grow or it will reduce your faithfulness to the calling. Number four, some friends will be needed at different stages. Some friends will be needed at different stages in the ministry. But you must be ready to let go when it is time. Understand that the friends you started with are not the friends you will continue with in the ministry. There are certain friends that God himself brought them. God himself will take them away. No matter the benefit you get from them, please descend to know that it is God who is taking them away from your life. Now, recently I had some powerful people who were close to me. All of a sudden, they started departing. I said, ah. So I was checking myself, did I do anything wrong? And God told me, no, you have not done anything wrong. I brought them and I am taking them away. What is your problem? <laughs> I said, thank you, sir. Sorry, sir. <laughs> yeah, so please, we need to understand these dimensions in the ministry. There are some people that they will come and give you money. They will come and say, on bed door, be be up, be on my mouth. Do the beer, or my call from come over phone. My man, how? And you're not my friend. You're my friend, or Yeah. So please, as we are being prepared to be ordained, we need to understand that some people will come, some people will go. So when people are going, don't behave like Prophet Samuel who was wailing over uh, King Saul who God rejected. Don't behave like that. God has a better person prepared who is better than King Saul for you. You didn't say amen. amen. Yeah. So please, let's understand this. Some people will come, some people will go. It is the doing of the Lord. But Number five. No one can succeed alone in the ministry. No one can succeed alone in the ministry. Please, you need to understand that in ministry, there's nothing like an island. There's nothing like that in the ministry. Yeah. That is why God has connected us to so many people. It is an error for you to be in this class and at the end of this class, you don't know anybody here again. It's an error. Please don't do that. Now, your network will reveal your net worth. Your network will reveal your net worth. Yeah. So please, learn how to connect with people. I'm talking about strategic people. Learn how to connect with people. There's a time coming you need somebody who is a lawyer in your life. There's a time coming you are a pastor, but you need somebody who is a nurse in your life. So please, when you get close to certain professionals, connect well. Connect well. When you get close to certain pastors. Now in this class, we have pastors all over. Some people are coming from Brongahafo. Some people are coming from the central region. Some people are coming from eastern region and all that. Connect well. Connect well. Connect well. 
who do one or both say ordination now so full be wah free a friend please. My men share some many men number friend now connect connect well. Is very no. now my life is is full of connections, too much connections. So I'm traveling to places. People are wondering how did I get the connection. Now I I I I I, I hosted a program on WhatsApp. And I, I invited one man of God to come and minister on that program. So the man of God came. I joined him to the platform. And he saw all sorts of people all over the world on the platform. And he asked me, how did I connect all these people to the place? I told him, sir, we started building relevance. It's not today. <laughs> sure, we started building ourselves. It's not today. Why is it these people, they have been following us for long. Because we have been giving them some feed that they want. So they have stayed with us for so long. Yeah. So please, when you are doing ministry, don't do anything anyhow. Be careful. People are watching you. Yeah. You meet some people today, you might think that they, 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 they are not, they are observing you. They, some people can observe you from afar for 10, 3 years. Some of them can observe you for so long before they will connect. So please be careful. Don't do ministry anyhow because you think that Oh, yeah, Ghana and Ewo. And I say, Kurebia Sinawa. Do it well. People are listening to you. Now, we went for missions in Akosombo. And I, was, I had the privilege to go on there. There's this um, information center. So they said we were doing dumb breakers. So that day they said I'm the one preaching. Then I went, I went to preach about how to be born again. So after I preached the message, then we, we dropped from the information center. We were going to sit inside our car to go to where we are lodging. An old man came to me and the man said, Sir, please, are you the one who preached that message? And I said, Yes, sir. And he said, Ha, ah, you preached that message. Please, can you give me a copy of the message? I want to use it to teach my congregation. Old man, the man has been in ministry for more than 30, 40 years. When he heard the message, he was shocked. He said, Ah, sir, please, how did you produce this kind of message? And I said, It's the Holy Spirit, sir. It's the Holy Spirit, sir. It's the Holy Spirit, sir. So please. Be careful the way you emulate yourself, especially when you are giving the platform to minister. There are some places when you go and you, you don't minister well, they will never invite you. I'm telling you. Especially, there are some people when they are ministry, we're your old information. You know, <laughs> nobody's interested. Please, let's update ourselves. We are talking about buying manuals. We'll be an answer man unknown to be. No problem. No problem. Maybe I now feel it, oh, but I'm giving you some yes. So please don't don't behave as if uh, you dear you, you there are certain things you will not do. No, don't do that. Don't do that. There's no way you come to such a place like this and will not recommend things that will help you to you. No, it means we are not helping you. So please, so that's why we are talking about sacrifice. So, so, so everything you have to get big money before you. No, no, no. The least you have, contribute. Number six, give the best at all time you are given opportunity. Give the best at all time. That's what I just spoke about. Give your best. Anytime you have the opportunity, even if it is prayer you are leading, give your best. You don't know who is sitting there. You don't know. Especially like we are gathered like this from different, different places. We don't know. You don't know who is sitting by you. You don't know. So give your best. Give your best. A well-utilized opportunity can boost your ministry forever. Give your best. Number seven. You can't succeed in ministry without copying what has worked for others. Now, ministry is not a place of competition, but it is a place of copying. Yeah. It's a place of copying. I have a mentor when he calls us for meeting and we go and sit down. Whatever he's doing, he said, we should watch and also go and do it in our churches. Wow. <laughs> he believes in copying too much. So long as the thing is working for somebody, he will tell you, copy it, it will work for you too. Yeah. Even though it's not always true. Sometimes some things can work for some people, it will not work for you. Yeah. So you have to discern in copying. Number, number eight. Some pastors will never respect your calling. You need to understand this. Some pastors, no matter what you do, they will not respect your calling. Yeah, it is there. <laughs> uh, you are not the only person. It has happened to a lot of people. Don't be worried. 
some of them will be spreading false rumors about you. Don't mind them. Just focus on what God has called you to do. Now, listen to this. Anybody who joke with your ministry, please don't have anything to do with the person. Yeah. Anybody who, who like when the person comes to your ministry and they don't want to, um, like they don't want to patronize your ministry or they don't want to celebrate your ministry, please be careful with those people. Yeah. Don't tolerate them. I'm telling you. Yeah. Do you know why? Because your ministry is your life. If you, if you lose your ministry, you have to lose your life. So be careful. If people don't want to support your ministry, please mark them. Yeah, mark them. They are not people you should get closer to yourself. Number, number, number nine. Number nine. Okay, so that's now I just said number nine. Number ten. Some pastor friends will always focus on your weakness and forget what God is achieving with you. It, it, it is there. It's in the ministry. There are some pastors who call themselves friends. They will, they will never celebrate what God is doing in your life. But when your weakness shows for, ah, for that one, they will broadcast it. It's, it's in the ministry. So expect things like this. Now, one of the things that has helped many people to stand the test of life in the ministry is because they understand these things. So when it happens, and, and how mukra, it is part of the ministry. Understand that some pastor friends will always focus on your weakness. It is part of the ministry. Number 11, you need discipline to stay alive with the word of God as a pastor. So we are talking about principles that will guide your ministry to the destination God have, has assigned for the ministry. I said, you need discipline to stay alive with the word of God as a pastor. Now, as a pastor, it comes at times where the burden on you is so much that you don't even want to have time to study the word and all that. But it takes discipline to do that. So please, don't forget this. When you begin to feel that you are, you are tired, you don't even have time. There, there's a time coming, some of us will be all over the world. They will be inviting us. There. If you are not careful, you don't even have quite time for yourself. Be careful. Yeah. It, it's part of the ministry. But your discipline will cause you to even focus, to always do your quiet time and to stay with the word. Number 12. There's a wisdom you will never get until the need arises in your ministry. There's a wisdom you will never get until the need arises in ministry. Now, I don't know how many of us have thought of this. Most of the times, when you thought you couldn't do something, and it's like there's no help and there's nobody, that was when you did that thing. Have you, have you said it that? Yeah. So don't easily give up when situations shows that you can't make it. Don't give up. Don't give up. There's one thing about me. Me, I don't give up. I don't care whether the thing is Whatever, I will never give up. I don't give up. So long as God has told me to do that thing, whether it is working or not, I will still continue. Now, if I tell you how many times I try, I try to do the, the Bible school, I couldn't do it. For about five consecutive times, I tried. It didn't work. But I didn't stop <laughs> because God told me that I must do it. I didn't stop. I didn't stop. So, so please, don't, don't, don't easily give up when your expectations are not being fulfilled. Don't give up. So long as it is God who has given you that vision, focus, continue. It will work. Yeah, it will. You too, you gather people so. You didn't say amen. amen. Yeah. Now, one of the things that is difficult in pastoral work is gathering people. <laughs> it's not easy. Ha! It's not easy. But I say you too, you gather people some. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, you gather people some. Number 13. You must respect those who have gone ahead of you, no matter their age. Listen to this. Now, grace is not a respecter of age. Yeah. So we need to understand this. There are a lot of pastors that, when they are older than you, in the, in the, in, in, in the realms of age, but you are older than them in the ministry, they see you like you are a small boy. It's, it's wrong. Please. It's wrong. We, we have people who, according to their age, they are not grown. But the grace on them is too grown. 
Yeah. So when you see people like that, accord them the necessary respect. Understand this. Spiritual giftings are imparted. Sorry, they are imparted in the place of honor. So it's not about age. No. But so long as God is using the person and there, there are results that are being proven, please. Respect grace and honor grace. Hallelujah. Yeah. Somebody said that in ministry, we don't have age mates. But we have grace mates. Well, all sorts of things. But the truth is that in ministry, you cannot attract what you don't honor. Yeah. You can only attract what you honor. Now, one of the places to show you are honoring it's when you go to a place of authority, whatever the authority says, please follow it. Don't, don't be an exception to the rule. No. Who are you? Don't be an exception to So long as that person is the authority, whatever he says, do some. Don't go and stand there and be talking as if uh, you, you there, you can't. No, no, it doesn't work like that in the ministry. When you do that, you are destroying a certain bridge you pass on in the future. So be careful. Be very careful. Number 14, we don't use age to do ministry. We don't use it. These things are principles. That is guiding ministry. We don't use age to do ministry. We, that's why I'm saying that once you see grace manifesting on somebody, please honor the person. It has nothing to do with age. No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with age. If it was age, I'm not sure that there are some people God rejected and took some who were younger in age with respect to them. I'm not sure God will do that. So it's not age. It's not age. Now, number 15 says that your classmate can be your ministry teacher. Your classmate can be your ministry teacher. It is possible. There are a lot of people that we, we were in school with them, but today we are pastoring them. We were in the same class. Some of them were even our seniors, but today we are pastoring them. So let's, 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 let's look at what is ministerial ethics. What is ministerial ethics? Ministerial ethics is a course of study which establishes ethical guidelines, principles, code of conduct for ministers in God's vineyard. Now, why... Why is this ministerial ethics crown? Why is it important? It is important to, number one, mold your character. It will help you to mold your character. Now, most of these things are not from the Bible, but they are ethical. They are ethical. Yeah. They are ethical. It will mold your behavior. It will build your character. It will build your character. It will build your conduct and integrity. It's very important that to attain success in the ministry, you need to take ministerial ethics very serious. There was some people who ethics are bomb. said the June Sabbath who come ethics bomb are bomb. No, ethics are bomb. A bomb man kasan kasan kasan. We have a lot of people in the ministry. Once they get close to you, familiarity. Afomu omu, they don't even honor whether God. You, they they see you as though you are nobody. It's wrong. Please. We need to understand the place of being diligent. Now let's look at why ministerial ethics is crucial. Why ministerial ethics is crucial. Why is it so important? Why is it so important? Number one, to build trust and credibility with the congregation and community. Now many people don't come to church. But the way I want Nancy Kran or Krano, a mom who said, Who are your correct pastor? The way I want Nancy. Yeah, your pastor be on Nantana in public, great to know Ninam Sabasa. Oh, Nancy Krano. A man could form a mass or a Krano. I shall say, Who said no? So, our pastor will be booing me. Yeah. So, it helps you to build trust and credibility. With the people who surround you. It's very important. Number two. Ministerial ethics is crucial. To demonstrate 
a commitment to integrity and moral leadership. In the ministry, one of the things that brings success is your moral leadership. We have pastors that are almost by heart. Yeah. Or kasa by heart. Please understand that the ministry is a place where moral integrity must be displayed. Yeah, that's the ministry. A place where you, you demonstrate commitment to these things. You don't, you don't behave anyhow. No, 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 no. There are pastors, sir. I just say one, Obian friend, Obian Vatan, and Koyi, or Bed Jibian. Oh, yeah, or Bed, oh, Yen, or Bed Chanya, Jibian, and Nibi. Why her crow, you be so could be Jibian. We don't, we don't do these things. Pastor, what book Clerica, power or take throttle of front? Clerica, who did the throttle? Ah, so for any life, no, Clerica pound. Wa popa no shi. Toto o cho. Obi, obi si krampo anu o si. Se di panis. Fuf do o koko tila. No meti no no no. Ti na front. O pe so cha se. Please. There are certain things we don't do. Number three. To provide a framework for navigating complex ethical dilemmas. In the ministry. We have situations where. Some things will baffle your understanding, whereby you'll be confused. But ethics will show you the guidelines to come out of that confusion. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that ministerial ethics cannot be overemphasized in the ministry. It's compulsory. It's compulsory. <laughs> you say, you know, by the manual. You, you are a joker. You are a joker. You are not serious. I'm telling you, see, there are a lot of things that, as you have come here right now, especially with the manuals you have bought, maybe you might not have time to go through them that much. But later, later, you will come here and thank me for these manuals. I'm telling you. Yeah. Oh, so it has happened several times. A lot of students who came, about some some years later, they will come and say, "Ha!" So these things were in the manual we didn't know. It was now I said, "Let me go through the manuals," and I saw them. Hallelujah, yeah. Number five. Sorry, number number four. Protect the minister and the church from potential scandals and conflicts. One of the ways to stay away from scandals is to be guided by ethics. There are certain things that we don't do as a pastor. You don't take a woman into your car in a place where the place is secluded. In a place where nobody can trace that you are with her alone. It's very dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. Now, do you know that it is an error to even go for evangelism? One, it is not even in scriptures. Only you, you are going for evangelism. Like, or maybe you are going to visit uh, the opposite sex. Even now, the same sex cry is dangerous. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, it's very dangerous. So even the Bible says that God sent them to Jesus. Sorry, Jesus sent them two by two to go. Yeah. So it's very important. All these things are things that we must take root from and follow the order in the ministry. Now, if Jesus did that, there was a reason why he did that. So it's very important for us to also learn. Don't, you are not a superhuman pastor. You are not a superman pastor. Be careful. One of the things that make me like reading that book, The God's General, you see people that God used. The mistakes they did, eh? Ah, it's serious. Then you learn from it. So please, the recommended books we are buying, let's read them. And those of us who are not buying, no problem. But those of us who have bought it, please, let's read them. Let's read them. 
Let's don't go and buy. There are a lot of pastors, they have library, powerful books, but they don't read. <laughs> they are too busy to read books, but they are buying books. Yeah. Oh, too many pastors. Too many pastors. We have books, but when you see the book, obviously, yeah. book is powerful. So, in so fast and no crown, no crown, book on kind, on kind. But to book in the book, no goes. The piano in nam sa, in nam in nam sa. Hey, I don't know what you were ministering. She knew you, so for so for on ten a far kunshi an diya da. We shi an diya tete mi do nyakwa no idea di shi anoko. Please, let's be careful. A lot, a lot of pastors are joking in the ministry. I'm telling. That's why we are not seeing supernatural power manifesting because. People don't have time waiting on God. People don't have time. Well, but we can go and look for money and do all sorts of, for, for money. They call me buy your because here. Because it's here. I was watching a video where a, a man of God was praying. He was praying. I saw that an angel was descending to come and give the man of God an answer. All of a sudden, the man was praying. All of a sudden, he went to take his phone. And like he was praying hard. Offer for Nana, fe prayer, and now call from Oana Angel, no son, so call back. Oh, a caca criminal cage and a dunit and you. Far for Nafina Facebook. Share videos now with that will be empire. Please, let's 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 be disciplined. Let's be disciplined. Let's make sure we accord that which belongs to God to Him. Now, do you know that it is an error for a pastor not to spend time with God even a day? Is an error, <laughs> yeah. A pastor, who, 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 like you are not consistent in spending time with God, it's an error. I'm telling you the truth. If like a it's an error. We must understand this thing. These things go against ministerial ethics. Number six. Sorry, number five. Ensure responsible handling of church resources and finances. Ensure. Responsible handling of church resources and finances. So for for be bre, I sorry a basic kini mano. I no normally show mubushiya. Inta no amuye omu di hiya no. Ube di hiya che papa. Ude koso. I sorry be a sike be a ba I sorry niya odiya. I sorry ni diya mendi. Ko ye juma ko pe juma ni. So for um pe juma. Oko koso na se niya mie juma ni e juma. Koso ne diskano. Sika ni niya odiyo. And any money that comes into the ministry is not for the pastor. Please, we need to understand these things. Many pastors are 40 in this realm. Omu the ministry. Coronavirus by any who say, hey, so send us off for offering and omu do me to so. So for for be brave. So for a fena so for for fre fre. Who knew only new relationship crop fro. Maybe if you um send me twenty Ghana, hey, coronavirus time, no, then go you cry. It exposed a lot of pastors who are depending on the ministry money. Please, it is not only a pastor that belongs to denominations that must separate church money from ministry money. But if you are a founder of a church, you do the same thing. Understand that that the church money is not your own money. It's not for you. It's for the church. So please don't chop it. Don't chop it. I'm talking to you. Yes, you. Stop chopping the church money. It's not for you. That's why you are poor. Stop chopping it. Yeah. You, you can't steal from God and be rich. It doesn't happen like that. So please, let's learn to understand these things. Now, every man of God, every woman of God, God has a certain sum, sum of amount for you in your lifetime. But you, you see, the truth is this. God will not give you, like if, for instance, me, the money God must give me in my lifetime is uh, five trillion US dollars. He will not give me one, so he will give me small, 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 uh, equivalent to my age. So please, some of us, the money that is coming to us, let's save some for the ministry. Yeah, let's save some of the money for the ministry. It's not every money that comes then. No, please. Save some, save some for the ministry. Number six, foster a culture of accountability and transparency. Foster a culture of accountability and transparency. Don't be the bank roller. Don't be the secretary. 
Don't be the you now, nah, you are the administrator, everything you are the one for the church. Don't do that. Foster a unity of transparency. Whatever goes on comes in the church. Please let others be aware of it. The church is not for you, it's for Jesus. So make sure that you are handling the affairs of the church, you are managing the church with the mindset of transparency and accountability. Many pastors falter in this. Ethics are real pastors for be our hands. But I pray that God will have mercy on us. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, let's look at chapter 2. The minister and ethics. The minister and ethics. Now, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, Apostle Paul was speaking to his son. And listen to what he said. He said, but if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God the pillar and the grounds of the truth. The reason why we need to learn ethics is so that we will know how to behave even when our mentors and spiritual fathers are not around. Hallelujah. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's look at the reasons why we need ministerial ethics. Number one, moral leadership. Moral leadership. We are expected to model moral behavior even in the ministry. Number two, trust and credibility. Trust and credibility. Many pastors cannot be trusted. Opa, I'm telling you. See, many pastors, see, let, let me tell you this. You don't trust any pastor. You, I'm talking to you. Don't trust any pastor. You, don't trust any pastor. Yeah, I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. Don't trust in Pastors cannot be trusted. Pastors, Azampa passes. Please don't trust any pastor. Tell the person sitting by you don't trust any pastor. Don't trust. Yeah. But passes. Yeah, I mean, I mean. Ah, if you like, eh, do a program in your church and share food. Pastors will come and eat their food on top and go. Offering crown man. Offering. On our June. Offering crown man. It was a. Your pastor baby, I'm I'm a bad baby. Say, I can't say I'm too big. So I'm on top. Da, no me, no me. Passes. Now, if listen, if you don't let it happen to others, nobody will let it happen to you. Yeah. So if you're a pastor, understand these principles. The way you are behaving towards other pastors, you too, they will do it to you. Be careful, especially when a pastor here program say to book. Oh, why why is I on top? Oh, so be true. Say, oh, oh, she answer the true book. Oh, be true. Yeah, be told the name and I then. I'm a yashé. I'm telling you. I told you recently I went to Bogatanga. When I went there, I went to Papa Eastwood Church. I went to buy his books are expensive. I said, ah, what can book? Ah, one book is hundred cities. Why? I went to buy most of the books. I went to Prophet David Rauf. I went to his church. I went to gather all his books. I bought it. There's a certain man of God in Tamale. His name is uh, something, something Lefant. Aaron Fant. Thank you, sir. I went, he, I bought all his books. <laughs> bought all his books, yeah. That's why when I'm selling books, people are buying, Papa. You come to buy other pastors' books. You are not buying any pastors' book. And you want somebody to buy a book when you start writing books. Even Nimbiana had the true book, no crowd, and she you cry, cry, but poor said that Joseph Bakukon, what a man's son. Yeah, pastor, we are stingy. Which kind of pastor are you? And are you doing the work for Satan or Jesus? Jesus was not stingy. You are stingy. Please, let's be very careful. Now, pastors, when you are talking to pastors, you have to talk with rigid uh, voice and character. Because pastors, they are sworn, they pastors are sworn. Thing, man. And so, you are sorry, and you are and you are oh, Please, so as we are ordaining you, please, we don't want any, any because there are some, 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 some of the way, the things I'm seeing, you know, saying, I am going to be able to do it. They will say, I consider it. But, I will Number three, complexity of ministry. Complexity of ministry. Now, ministry involves complex situations. Understand this. Ministry involves complex situations. There are a lot of pastors who left places. They almost say, ah, asasi we the head. So, if you want to meet now, where succeed? Asasi be an head. Who now in your dinner? 
journey. Yeah. So as pastors, we must build ourselves. We must build ourselves to be able to solve complex problems. Now, ethics provide guidelines for navigating difficult situations. That's why we want to learn this. Number four, power dynamics. Power dynamics. Ministers hold a position of authority and ethics helps them use power responsibly. You see that? So ministry is, is a place where you must walk in the corridors of power. Or if you don't have power, you can't. That's why uh, Jesus speaking about that said he has given us power. God has given us power. You can't be in ministry without power. You are a joker. Yeah, the ministry is a place of power. It's a place of power. That's why uh, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he was advising the disciples that they should wait for the power before they do even evangelism. Power. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 20, the Bible says that the kingdom of God is not in food and drinks, but in power. Power. In power. In power. So, the way our ethics are bowy, we are sure to be in power. That is a boss. Said them. Listen, you being, being, being as a pastor, being, yeah. You you must build a resilient faith as a pastor. It's very important because there, there, there's power dynamics all over the place. A man for ko beni akodi to me sofu ni namokwa ube wuse you know akokono sheni yo sofu yeah sofu bibriu sofu ko na to point na. Or the Nika Kunya say no. Sofo. Yeah. Sofo air kwa so na ka kenya sin to be um sofu no penny we ah ah farmers in that can be um sofu no we no power no power please let's let's contend for these things yeah it doesn't come on a silver platter you need to pay a price you need to pay a price so oh yeah so for, you need to understand that the ministry work is a play where, a place where power is demonstrated yeah, one sorry, be out the demonstrative power. Promise you, we be for. Hey, and it is you know, so all sort of things in the ministry that we need to contend for power. Power number five, personal integrity. Now, ethics support ministers' personal spiritual growth and integrity. So, ethics even help you. To be a man of integrity. Understand that a, an integrity itself is a collateral. Yeah. Integrity is a collateral. Somebody bought a house and gave it to somebody who didn't have a place to sleep. Say, on under if you are a or two kwamba. Man, it's two kwamba, yeah. Ni re fimpo so ufibi. I didn't see. I did a fear ni jano say, on na hono kwamba. Or the nuku do so no kwa chinchi man a drink. The man na ba wo tu. Wako US a bagan and the ref is said we see if you be also be into them man. See that. So many people cannot be trusted. I was shocked. When I do you know Jumia, Jumia, do you know they have stopped operating in Ghana? Do you know why? The Ghanaians that were managing Ome Disikening. Ah, Brunini for Germany, you know, baby Juma. Ome Ome Disikening. My grace, Papa Nelson, Omi will be happy. No, no, Basa and Kobe Man Ghana for Juma. We die, okay. Because in Pinifor, the Oma ah, Visikenin, ah, please, we need to understand the place of integrity. It's very important. Number six, professionalism. Professionalism. Ethics demonstrate a commitment to excellence and professionalism in ministry. It's very important. Now, we have ethics in every field. One of the fields I want to talk about before we even finish my session. Is ethics. Let's let's go to the last chapter. Yeah, ethics for sex. Ethics for sex. So for for be bri omu mbui juma. It was a man oma ya basa. So for I want to be mbui juma. Emma ujiri mo abasu. Who problem? Pa, my answers are on. Yeah, then I will come to ethics for puppet ethics. Come to uh, puppet ethics, but let's look at this this very important one. Um, ethics of ministers' sex life. Ministers' sex life. Listen to this 
Number one, don't let anyone lie to you. Sex is good. Sex is sweet as a married minister. Sex is very sweet. Say it's sweet though. Yeah, sex is sweet. Yeah. Don't see, don't, 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 don't make yourself. I say sex is sweet though, it's sweet to say it's sweet though. Yeah. Sweet to sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not having say that. Oh, it's sweet to sex. That's a pentem cram. I have punk Sex is sweet. There is nothing like a man of God when it comes to displaying your sexual skills with your spouse. A lot of pastors cannot satisfy their spouse. But I pray that so long as the power has been given me to satisfy my wife, may God replenish it in your life in the name of yeah. Jesus. Yeah, my, my wife doesn't joke with me. Sure. And St. Claude talk gives me my because they will me pull to my pull to my pan. Yeah. Oh, yes, of home wage man. It was a yere crow on funny dear man. Oh, so for oh, you fake man. Oh, so for number three. You don't need anointing to have sex with your spouse. All you need is strength to survive the activity. Yeah. We have a lot of pastors that they are married and not standing because and I also soft for baby and home are so or be brand who say you be money uh 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 nyan se be and call debate me gina and answer on yeah why you biscuit in it office and be bia basa and go ye please let's be careful some of us yeah would be about to say a man in ninja because we don't satisfy them listen every woman want to be satisfied in the place of sex a pastor they are not satisfied. We have marriage counselors and all that. They will help us. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I said he lifted his head. So uh, a counselor, counselor, someone will help us. Now, number four, if you fail during sex, then your strength is little. Yeah. According to Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10. Yeah. Yeah. Na um mujuma. So um mujuma wo problem pa ye no bekasa. Obi o bet me nene rea or bet me anin send ni ba um mujuma. O ye three minutes. Eh, me three seconds. Um mujuma. So in Proverbs 24 10, the Bible said, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Now let's look at what not to do before sex with your spouse as a man of God. Listen to this. We are talking about men of God and sex. There are certain things you don't do before sex. Number one, don't quote scripture. Just hammer your spouse. Listen to this. Don't quote scripture. <laughs> hammer your spouse and stop all those things you are doing. What, what kind of life is that? Hammer the person. Yeah. There are a lot of pastors. When, be, because, because sexually they are not strong. You know. Now man said that. Number two. Don't start with opening prayer. It is not church service. Please be very be very careful. It is not church. Just usher into the Holy of Holies and have the sex, please. A lot of pastors are like that. Like, yeah, you, oh, if you are eating, you pray. But there are some eating, please. Now, some pastors will intentionally pray just to put the woman off not to have the sex because no one say and ko yoni ahon din yeah my mentor for here num ku ben si o they just ask him no we dey so for so for the ice cream by this time num ku ben si o num man we dey dey na kan o men num si o num kwa number 3 don't off the light in the bedroom when about to have sex it is primitive or it is primitivism and hypocrisy a lot of pastors are like that. No, we be doom like this. We want people to be who they need. Yeah, they don't need. We be a bomb match, and we be there. The people who don't send all them are who doom like. So let's not be doom man. We who need echo. We are quadruple power. We are so far. Number four, don't be ashamed to perform the act of sex. God will still use you after the service or the exercise. There are a lot of pastors who think when you have sex to your spouse, it's a sin, especially. Some pastor, let me tell you this. Eh? Some people say that if you are fasting, you don't have to have sex. It's not true. But it should be to the consent of your spouse. If your spouse says that, no, 
if you are fasting, me, I want to have sex. Please don't say, now nah, uh, your, your wife is not spiritual. Stop that kind of thing. So long as the person is not consenting to it, please have sex even when you are fasting. It's not wrong. Hallelujah. Hey, pa, uh, uh, is, are you pastors? I say hallelujah. Amen. Hey, so there are pastors here. Wow. <laughs> Number five. Number five. Don't ask your spouse if she or he is ready for the act of sex. Just apply the ministry of laying of hands. <laughs> now, when you are laying hands in the church, you ask the people, I want to lay hands. No, 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 lay hands. Please. The same thing when you are having sex. You don't ask. You don't have to ask your spouse. Are you ready? All those, please. We don't, we, don't, we don't play those games. Go straight and do it. Number six, don't be spiritual when it comes to the place of sex. Please, don't be. There's nothing like spirituality. Number seven, don't take sexual drugs. A lot of pastors are weakening themselves by virtue of this. Don't take sexual drugs. Maybe you didn't know, but you are hearing now. Don't take sexual drugs. Those things have side effects. Too many pastors are not performing because of this. Number eight, don't kill your wife with your equipment. Oh, pastor. There are some pastors we are almost normal to me, you know, so please don't, don't, don't hammer your wife like as if you have gotten some prostitutes. Don't do that. Take it easy on the woman. Hallelujah. Yeah. You still have another day to have sex. So please relax. Don't have sex as if uh, 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 do and die. Do and die. Ooh, yeah, yeah, do, ooh, no. Don't do that. Please relax. Okay, so what to do before having sex? There are certain things that we need to take note of as a pastor. Please, I'm not talking about people who are not married. Though. I'm talking about married couples. So, you know, a certain pastor told me that if uh, you cohabit with a woman and you give birth, God accepted that it's marriage. A pastor, pastor told me that. Wow. So I asked him, where did he get that theology from? He said, oh, it's in the scripture. I said, he should show me where it is up to now. I'm waiting for him to show me. So what to do before having sex? Number one, take your bath to be refreshed for the occasion. It's very important that before you have sex, you take your bath. It's very important. Pastor, 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 pastor. It's very important. Take your bath. Number two, brush your teeth to avoid bath mouth odor. Brush your teeth. There are a lot of pastors that they over spiritualize everything. Please, pastor, before you have sex with your wife, brush your teeth. Brush your teeth. Make cases. So be obedient. Yeah. Number three, just take a nap. The turn on spot of your spouse's body, and everything will be left open for you to enter. It is free. Hallelujah. Oh, I say hallelujah. There, there are some pastors that they don't know how to turn on their spouse. So they will be saying all sorts of unnecessary things. Please tell the person. And then the person may go. Yeah, tell the let the person know. I know a certain pastor I said before or by rain a year, you know, I know I born it too. Hallelujah. Number four. Imagine you were not a minister. What would you have done to, the, to that body? You must lavishly grasp the fallen fountain. It's very important. There are a lot of pastors that they say, he said, "I saw you when you come on the middle. You are a bold man, and what then? You see, it's very important for us to relate well in the realms of sex. It's very important. Now, understand that it is compulsory to have sex in marriage. There are some pastors' spouse because pastors are not agreeing to it. You know, a bold man be a no bananya. It is a woman who bear five women, so she can't live. It is a few bad men who are no bad nishru. We go so so be sanim." You know, so we, we need to understand these dynamics. It's very important. Number five, make sure you shave all your public, your, sorry, your pubic hair to look normal and palatable as a pastor. 
Number six, make your spouse happy and expecting the action. In Proverbs 23, verse 18, the Bible says, Surely there's a future and a reward, and your hope and expectation will not be cut off. So there's so many instructions there that I would like you to take your time and read, even as you have the manual. Now, finally, let me talk about puppet ethics. Puppet ethics. Chapter 6. Puppet ethics. Puppet ethics. Puppet ethics. Now, the puppet is the most sacred place in the sanctuary and must be treated with respect and order. It is the place where God reaches out to people and must be governed and given by godly principles and acceptable conduct. Please, the pulpit is not a place where they allow those people who do jokes to come. No. The pulpit is a sacred place. It's very important. Now, I know a certain man of God in Nigeria who used to give his pulpit to these comedians. So he said one day God visited him and God was angry. And he was disturbed. He asked God, ah, how can you? and God said, ah, how can you give my pulpit to comedians who don't even know me? Ah, are you disdaining me? So please, it's very important that the pulpit is a sacred place. We need to keep it as such. So let's look at 10 pulpit habits. 10 pulpit habits. Number one, come to the altar with the appropriate outfit. It's very important that when you want people to pay attention to you, please check your dressing as a pastor. Don't dress anyhow and come to the pulpit. Now, there are a lot of pastors that are copying American pastors. They wear these T-shirts, uh, jeans, please be careful. We are not Americans. Mm. Dress well, pastor, dress well. A lot of pastors do not dress well. Now, some of them owe to the father. They don't have what it takes to dress well. But you see, the truth is that no matter the level you are, you can dress well. Yeah, dress according to your level. Dress modestly. In Exodus chapter 28, the verse 2. Now, let me read from the Amplified uh, Translation, the uh, Amplified tr uh, Classic Translation. Proverbs chapter 28, uh, sorry, Exodus. Exodus 28. Verse 2, and then I'll read the verse 40. He said, And you shall make for Aaron your brother sacred garment. You see that? So, what I was saying, I was saying, I was saying, I I was I was he continued to say that dress, he said, and you shall make your uh, for Aaron, your brother, sacred garment, appointed official dress, set apart for special holy services, for honor and for beauty. So you see, the dresses you wear to minister, please don't take them just everywhere. No, get special dresses. Get special dresses you use on a puppet. It's very important. It's very, very important. Now, the verse 40 of Exodus chapter 28, he said, For Aaron's sons you shall make long and sleeve tunics and belt or sashes and caps for glory and honor and beauty. Number two, your messages must be simple and practical. Your messages must be simple and practical. It's very important for you to understand the place of telling messages that relate to the day-to-day -day issues of the people. That is what to address their, their problems. We have pastors that are interested in talking Greek, all those things, for you to see. So, when you are teaching, make sure that you teach Topics that the people can relate to. Don't I have a, 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 a gentleman who pre, when he's preaching, he said, I'll confuse you. When he's preaching, he will tell the congregation, I'll confuse you. I'll con ah. 
So one day I call and say, ah, sir. So you, you are called to confuse people. Now in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, 2 Corinthians 11, 3, the Bible says, but I fear, least somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, let's learn as men and women of God to teach the people to know and not to be ignorant. Now, one of the things that I hate is to see people who are ignorant, who don't know anything. Ah, I don't want it at all. So I want to take my time to deliver a message that will deal with ignorance. Please, that is what we have been called to do as a pastor. You have been called to clear the ignorance of people. So don't see people who are living in ignorance. No, you are not a correct pastor. You are a joker. Please, help people to come out of ignorance. That is what grows a church. Help people to come out of ignorance. Hallelujah. Number three, avoid exaggeration and making up on true stories. Avoid exaggeration. Too many pastors are liars on the pulpit. One day, a friend of mine was preaching. I was sitting there. I said, all what he said, he said he has traveled, he is lying, he has not traveled anywhere. <laughs> so, I, so when you finish, I said, ah, sir, when did you try? He said, try the message, this name, oh, God, what's all, can you maybe for you, my son? Ah. So since then, I didn't want to even get, he, he's not a serious guy. A pastor. You are like, okay, or defending, so. Please, if you're a pastor, be careful the messages that you preach. Be careful what you say when you are preaching. Don't lie to people. Because lies do not build uh, souls. It's truth that builds souls. In Psalm 101 verse 7, in Psalm 101 verse 7, the Bible says, He who works deceit shall not dwell within my house. You see that? Yeah. If you work deceit, you can't dwell within the house of God. He who tells lies shall not continue in my presence. Hallelujah. Yeah. Please, I want us to, let's be on our feet. Let's celebrate my, my pastor. Let's celebrate Reverend Michael Isiabed. Oh, let's put our hands together and celebrate the man of God. He's my pastor, my pastor. This is my pastor. Yeah. You are welcome, sir. Hallelujah. All right, please, let's get seated. Number four, consider the understanding level of your members. Consider the understanding level of your members. It is very important for you to understand that we have different levels of understanding in every church. So when you are preaching a message, you must preach the message in such a way that every level of understanding will get something out of it. Yeah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 22 to 23, the Bible says, To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men that I might be, sorry, I might by all means save some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of it with you. Hallelujah. Yeah. So please, let's take our time. There's so much nuggets in this manual. Let's, act, let's take our time and then make sure that we go through it systematically and when the exams comes, we'll pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Make exams. We'll be able to shame in him. All right. So I, I want us to um, take a, a song ministration from Prophet Robert Reku, even as we prepare our way for my pastor to lead us in the second session. So please, let's celebrate the man of God as he comes. Oh, no, no, that's yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen.